Hello, everybody. Welcome to our January, end of January general meeting for Southern Oregon Family Farms Producer Cooperative. Um, this meeting, we're going to do a quick um, outline as far as who and what Southern Oregon Family Farms is. We'll do a short introduction from uh, all our current farm members. We'll keep that to about 30 seconds per farm member. We're then going to open up the floor to hear from some new members that are looking to uh, join our cooperative. We'll also give an opportunity for ancillary supportive providers to introduce themselves and give them a little bit more time to um, tell us about what they do as a business and how they can help the group. And uh, after each one of the ancillary businesses um, have a little bit of time, we'll also open up the floor for a little bit more pointed specific questions. And then we'll do some market updates um, from legislative sessions and pricing. Um, so I'll start with uh, Southern Oregon Family Farms um, is a farm member owned cooperative with our, which our objective is to serve the financial best interests of its members. To be a member, you have to be an OLCC farm, an owner operator, sun grower with a financially vested interest in Oregon. Southern Oregon Family Farms aims to create systems and strategic relationships that work to streamline product placement on dispensary shelves through wholesale partners and order fulfillment providers. Establishing quality assurance through strict standards, grading practices, and packaging development to reward the end consumer with a quality and repeatable experience. We take action through legislative efforts within the state and position ourselves for nationwide export. So I want to introduce myself. My name is Aaron Getty, Vice President of the Cooperative. Um, we are a tier two, a two tier twos here at the confluence of the Applegate and the Rogue Rivers. We have two different uh, soil types that we grow in. Um, we're full, full term, no greenhouses. Um, we really pride ourselves on not using any horticultural oils. Um, and that's a little bit about me. How about I transfer the um, next to Alan Clark to get an introduction from him, um, his farm and his position within the cooperative. Hello, my name is Alan Clark. Um, we're mixed here too, out on the coast uh, in Bandon. Um, I'm the uh, chair for the policy committee and um, look forward to meeting all of you. Thank you, Alan. Let's hear from Tyler Carpenter. Hey guys, Tyler Carpenter um, with Coomba Hills. We are a tier two light depth in outside of Rogue River. I'm the committee chair for the grading committee. And yeah, we got some big things in the works. Great, thank you, Tyler. Uh, let's hear from Patrick Roganja. Hey guys, it's Patrick from uh, Roganja out in Eagle Point. Um, operate with my brother, Kelowna. Tier two, um, living soil farm. We do massive seeds. So all our uh, all our plants are, are grown from seeds. From this this year was our first year, solely seeds from our own genetics, um, and it turned out to be a great year. Uh, zero spraying for pests, pests because just a seed plant has so much more vigor. Um, our farm just currently got Sun and Earth certified, which is really cool achievement for us. Um, just showing our uh, commitment to proper respect for the land and people. Um, yeah, I just got out of an ice bath, so I was just doing some exercises to get my uh, body warm. So sorry for the huffing and puffing. <laughs> uh, Patrick is our Sergeant of Arms. So if there's any uh, members that are not meeting requirements, he's our, our guy that goes out and addresses people on a personal basis and talks to them about what's going on and how they can get back on track. So um, I think, oh, let's go with Devin Parker, Circle D Farms. You're on mute, De Devin. Hi, I'm Devin, Circle D Farms, uh, tier two, sun grown, uh, located in Cave Junction. Been growing for about 24, 25 years. 
and uh, I'm also on the grading committee with Tyler. Could you, uh, since our president, Christine, is on another call and you're okay. with her, would you mind doing a quick introduction for her? Yeah, so me and Christine. She's waiting kinda... in the waiting room, Justin. Oh, it's my bad. We've been co oping <laughs> together since 2016. Go ahead. Hi, I'm Christine Miller. I am the owner, grower, operator of Southern Oregon Moonshine, a sun-grown tier two in Cave Junction, and I'm the president of the co-op. Hi. Great. I saw Rhea of Millerville just jumped on. Why don't you give an introduction to yourself? Hi, guys. Good morning. Rhea Miller here from Millerville Farms. We are a tier two and a tier one uh, sun-grown producer in Cave Junction. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, I think that um, does a lot of the existing. Um, uh, hey, Aaron. Numbers. What's up? Aaron. Oh, are you there? Are you Green Bandit? All right, Sarah. Sorry yeah. about that. <laughs> hey, so uh, yeah, I'm logged, I'm logged in. I'm logged in under the, the SOFF Zoom account. Okay. So that's why you see the SOFF logo. Okay. Yes. Hello. So uh, Sarah and my husband, Brian, we are the 100% uh, owners and operators of Green Bandit. We, Brian is the farmer. I do everything else. And um, yeah, we are one tier two uh, full-term sun-grown living native soil. We uh, also just got Sun and Earth certified. Um, all of our packaging to consumer products are uh, plastic free, compostable. Um, and yeah, very, very happy to be part of the co-op and be forming, forming, uh, you know, the foundation of this and excited for what we're doing. Thank you. Uh, add, a little bit, add a little bit to finish Sarah. She's our secretary on the board of directors for the cooperative. Um, and next I was going to introduce um, our next. Oh yes. And sorry. It, and Brian is the chair of the uh, packaging and product development committee. Thanks, Aaron. <laughs> I, will, I won't forget you, Justin. Um, we have uh, Bodie Durant, which is a new farm oh, member. We just voted on, um, yes, two, two days ago. So Bodie, why don't you give a quick introduction to yourself? Hey, everyone. Uh, welcome. Uh, thanks for le letting me be a member in the group. Um, I am uh, one of the owners of Kirby Kush Farms, located in Kirby, just north of uh, Cave Junction. We've been in business since uh, 2016. Uh, we're tier two all uh, natural light uh, producer and uh, look forward to working with all you guys. Thank you so much. All right, Justin, now's your moment. Let's hear from uh, you. And Kayla, uh, Justin Bote, treasurer of the board, um, uh, CEO of Calix CPAs in Medford, Oregon, uh, just helping our region to thrive, to survive and thrive, um, especially specialized in 280E mitigation. So if you know any like dispensaries that are being nailed, uh, you can have them send them over to me. I can talk to them about our aggressive but defensible approach to mitigating that. Um, farms, we could definitely help out if they've got an uninformed or over conservative accountant, for sure. Cool. Thank you so much. And Andrew is also on the call, too. Yeah, Andrew, why don't you introduce yourself next? Hey, I'm Andrew DeWeese. I'm a partner here at Greenlight Law Group. Um, I'm you know, we're a full service uh, cannabis law firm. I'm a, I'm a business lawyer. I generally, um, I, I'm a litigator. So people generally call me if they get into trouble um, with the OLCC or with uh, another person they're doing business with. Thank you, Andrew. So next I'm gonna open up the floor to new prospective members. I see a couple of names that are familiar. Um, I want to start with Huron. Huron's uh, been interviewing with the co-op for quite some time. He was just in Costa Rica for like a month. So he had some uh, time off. So let's hear from Huron if you're available. Morning. Good to see everyone on the call. It's awesome to see this thing grow. I'm glad to be back a part of it. Uh, and I hope to be continuing uh, to be a part of it. Uh, again, I specialize in fresh frozen procurement and storage. We have a 16 by 24 foot walk-in sub-zero freezer that we've decided to bring all of our product right out of the field as fresh as can be 
into 10 pound increments and uh, present that uh, to the market in hopes of just doing something different and seeing what other sides of the market might open up for us. So that's a little bit about what I specialize in. We've been growing since 2016, and uh, we hope we can continue to to uh, to grow this industry in the right ways. Thank you, Huron. I wanted to open up the floor for Amy from Ebb and Flow. Nice to see you here again. You're on mute, though. I'd like to hear you, too. There we go. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Hi. Um, yeah, my name is Amy from Ebb and Flow. Lisa's here, too. She's just not on camera. She's listening in. Um, yeah, it's been a few weeks or a month since last joined, but or last visited you guys. Um, we're definitely interested in applying and becoming a part of the co-op and been thinking about it a lot. We've been pretty busy and uh, with a lot of planning for the season and excited for this year. It seems we got through a pretty rough year in 2022. So let's, let's look up for 2023. Um, yeah. And we're, uh, we are living soil uh, organic farm. We, we utilize um, all our practices in, in our methodologies and focus on the mineralization and um, improving the soil with, with composts and teas and things like that. So awesome. uh, what was that? Oh, sorry. Lisa's chiming in, trying to remind me of things to say. <laughs> uh, we also have, we have a, uh, we do sun grown and um, greenhouse. So, cool. Well, no underneath ice. like what we would consider sun grown, um, you guys are, are right there in line where as long as you're not adding lights to the flowering schedule, then, you know, using the sun, whether you're depriving of light and getting a double your harvest of full term, versus just one single full term or maybe even auto combinations. Um, that's all that we, we're all in support of all that. And uh, you know, a lot, pretty much, I think everybody in Oregon, if not everybody on this call knows about ebb and flow. So great to have you a part of the aspirations to join. Thank you, Amy. And Noah Thank just you. Noah just uh, got on it too. All right, Noah. Another well, member. Noah, do you want to introduce yourself and what you got going on? Uh-oh. He's muted. That's all right. Let's probably should just move on now. Oh, you guys got me? Yeah, we got yeah, you. Yeah, got you at the perfect Sorry. Time. Yeah, I'm hauling a 24-foot a gooseneck and uh, managing to get out of a gas station right now. But I am free and clear. I have made it. Ooh, all right. Okay, now I'm free and clear. Had to jump the curb. Uh, all right. Uh, Noah Coner of Benson Arbor. Uh, see, we're uh, uh, outdoor and greenhouse um, and uh, living soil, native soil, and then we focus uh, on pre roll these days, uh, infused and not infused. We got a little bit of that, Noah. Um, if you turn off your video, it might help a little bit of the. Uh... Yeah, there we go. How's that? Is that's that better? better? Yeah, you're up. Oh. Yeah, infused pre-rolls and pre-rolls. you number, what, three in the state right now? Yeah, you know, it's uh, really hard to tell. I've, now I know that the data uh, is so inaccurate, you can't actually tell your raking. Um, but we're, we're rolling uh, 200,000 pre-rolls a month and getting them to market and selling them. Um, so I think that puts us somewhere in the top five for sure. Well, you guys, you guys have a reputable brand. You guys have been doing a great things. Um, I'm pleased to have you a part of the group and, uh, you know, looking forward to doing great things for the Oregon industry. So I really appreciate you um, along with everybody else in the group. So I wanted to open up the floor to some of the names that I don't know. So um, excuse me if I don't know if you're a farm member or an ancillary business, but if you're a farm member, just try to keep it short. If you're an ancillary business, we'll give you a solid five minutes to introduce yourself and the services that you're, you're bringing. So I'm going to go from... I would say, hey, Aaron, if, if, they, if, they're, if they're new ancillary businesses, we'll give them more time. But if they're returning, then um, there's plenty of video recordings on introductions that people have sold their, you know, that are selling their services. So maybe we give the new ancillary business opportunity to introduce themselves and potential new, new farm visitors, right? 
that totally. you could hear more about them. Uh, excuse me. I'm just going to try to go from my video left all the way across. So um, the first one um, is a name that I feel I feel is a little bit familiar. I know uh, you're probably I know your son. This is David Tyson. Do you mind yeah. introducing yourself a little bit? Yes. <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, I'm David Tyson. Uh, I have a farm out in Roosh. Uh, we have two tier two licenses and we pretty much grow all organic. I've got a dispensary up in Portland called Oregon's Best Buds. And um, we're just looking to uh, network with different people now. The market's getting tougher and tougher every year. And that's where we're at right now. Just checking in with you guys and seeing uh, what you got to offer. Heck yeah. I know your son, Brady. He's an awesome dude. Yes. I really appreciate your uh, participating. Um, and I did see a little later in the my queue of people, I saw David Hoyle. I know that yeah. uh, David Hoyle works with you guys. So I wanted to give uh, David a chance to introduce himself and uh, what you uh, what he's looking. He's probably is maybe like the um, what, how you guys work together and maybe how his what his services are different or how they align. Right. Our companies are. Uh, First one's Moto Perpetual Farms, and our other farm is Cascade Chronic. So, is I don't know if Dave Hoyle's there. He can go ahead and talk also. Yeah, I'm here. Cool. Yeah, so we actually run three three tier two, uh, two down in Southern Oregon, and then we have one uh, up in the Portland area, all sun grown. Uh, we do some light depth and some greenhouse, but mostly full term outdoor moving towards using uh, the majority of our own seed production, our own in-house genetics. Uh, we also run a, a small wholesale out of the Portland area. Uh, we do a lot of uh, fresh frozen material uh, as well. Oh no. You got cut off right at fresh frozen material, David. Oh, uh, as well as pre-rolls and uh, flour. Cool. Well, thank you so much. I've done some business with you in the past. Really appreciate the opportunity to work with you guys. You guys have done me solids. So I appreciate you guys. So uh, thank you. let's thank hand you. over the mic to Javid of, uh, and his, of, of his grading service. Grading service is called Big Tree. And um, until I hear from you, Javid, because uh, I haven't heard you yet. Um, Javid's really helping us with our third-party grading and our in-house grading system that we'll use for standardizing our products and guaranteeing quality for um, the end consumer. Javid, you got a moment to chime in? Still not hearing you, though. Hey, how's it going? Go. Good. Thank you for the intro. Um, <clears throat> yeah, our business uh, has been based in Washington. We've been doing this for seven years. The um, company, we have two companies. One is Big Tree Grading, where we have um, implemented a standard from the ICHS, the International Cannabis and Hemp Standard, into a process to quality verify and appraise um, cannabis. Typically bulk wholesale cannabis has been our focus in terms of uh, developing the business and the, the grading app that um, has been under field testing, which is now going into uh, a new technology phase utilizing AI, which really is gonna snap in the, um, the results, right? So we, we're gonna lessen and lessen any human error in there. But anyway, what we do is we go in and we, we grade and appraise bulk wholesale lots. Uh, we've also been asked more and more now to grade product that is going into retail um, to help brands differentiate, to help retailers differentiate to the consumer. And um, what that's going to look like is a quality verification stamp. A score can also be attached um, if the brand wants to really promote that um, high quality or high, high level score. Um, and then using QR code technology will provide uh, full transparency into the supply chain so the consumer knows actually what they're getting. In a state like Oregon, I think, you know, your consumer has a better um, opportunity to engage with the cannabis, right, with the deli style um, of interaction. In states like Washington and California, where it's all consumer packaged goods and it's closed, you know, people have even less opportunity to actually know what they're buying beforehand. Um, 
you know, so that that's really our um, our grading service. And yeah, honored and uh, grateful to be part of these conversations with um, the Southern Oregon Family Farms Co-op. I think it's awesome what you guys are working on and putting together and, you know, seeing things like the, the letter that came out of California pushing for interstate trade. Um, whenever it happens, this is going to be a national market um, and eventually an international market and being able to differentiate product and brands um, through third party quality verification, uh, where it's not you guys saying your weed is the best, but it's um, an outside objective standard that's coming in and saying it's great for these reasons, I think is going to really allow the farmers to finally get paid for the quality that they're, they're producing, right? Not just based on a market condition or a, a retailer's leverage, being able to kick everybody um, in the proverbial to get the best price because people are having a hard time. The other side of our business and, and really grading. Well, is well, we, we probably should keep moving on because we got a lot of people to participate, you know, the cool. to interview. Sorry, Thanks. I don't mean to be rude. Just want to make sure we have a no. pay attention to Not time. Rude at all. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. So I'm going to go once again, um, just going down from video left across. Um, the next one I see, which I don't um, know, is uh, Matthew Nelson. Would you give an opportunity to introduce yourself and Hi, I'm Matthew Nelson. I run Helpful Harvest Trim Company. Um, we operate out of a wholesale in Eugene, Oregon. I met Justin in Las Vegas at the BizCon this year, and he told me about your organization, uh, invited me to come listen and, and uh, take part. Um, cool. I'm interested to hear what's going on uh, on the Southern Oregon end with the, with the sun growers. And I, I don't do a lot of... Uh, work with you guys currently, but, um, you know, this industry is tight and it's, uh, having connections to every, as many people as throughout the industry is, is helpful just in strengthening, you know, our community and like our, our businesses together. So that's why I'm here. Matthew, do you, um, is, do you share the building with Steve Brussels from Vist? No, no. I, no, I'm, no, I'm uh, so my wholesale is called Speed Cutter. Uh, we actually don't do any uh, wholesaling currently. We've just we started in 2016 uh, trimming. Our first job was in somebody's living room, and then uh, uh, got into TJ's for a little bit. And um, I bounced around the locations trying to live inside of wholesales until I could afford to uh, make the move into my own space. Okay, cool. Well, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. All right, next on uh, my my video feed is Nico. And um, would you pronounce your full name? As, I'm not sure what yeah. I see. Thanks, Aaron. And uh, thanks, Justin, for uh, the invite. I also uh, connected with you at MJ Biz, same as Matt. Uh, my name is Nico Hache. I'm co-founder of Hache Clute Consulting. Uh, we're an international consulting firm. Uh, my background, I'm a horticulturist by trade. So I spent a decade and a half in commercial greenhouses, uh, growing flowers, vegetables, and trees for reforestation. Legalization came to Canada in 2013 on the medical side. So I joined one of the uh, largest producers today in Canada. I was director of ops there. Uh, and I've been consulting for the last six years, um, worked for one of the largest consulting firms uh, in Canada, then got bought by Deloitte Canada. So worked for Deloitte for two and a half years. Um, and essentially, uh, which brings me to the conversation of our services. So if I take too long there, just cut me off, give me the old hook. Um, so we do operational uh, optimization. So obviously we do a lot of plant health uh, consulting, but it's mostly around operational improvement, cost reduction strategies uh, with, you know, I'm, I'm over 20 years in horticulture. So my network of service providers and technology and automation, uh, that's what we bring to the table. Uh, my colleague that is not here, she uh, spent 30 years in the educational uh, industry, uh, developing curriculums at the university level. 
she developed the first cannabis university program uh, in Canada uh, that uh, was launched in 2014 or 2015, I believe. Sorry, she's not on the call, so I'm trying my best to give her uh, the accolades she deserves. Uh, so we do a lot of training and refinement with our operational improvements. So that's attached with training. We also do lots of seminars, talks, uh, webinars, and uh all kinds of training sessions. So uh, we mostly focus in cannabis, but we don't only do cannabis uh, with our backgrounds. We, we tend to go into other industries as well. Uh, but in the cannabis world, we've done projects uh, working with greenhouses, reducing plant density by 30%, increasing their yields. I'm working with a power management uh, company right now, and we're looking at saving 44% on their energy cost of a 1.5 acre greenhouse. Uh, so all in all, it's not just plant touching services that we bring, it, it's an overall thing. And Justin, we talked a lot about audits and inspections and getting some uh, European GMP accreditation in a couple of weeks. So we'll be able to fully uh, audit facilities to get them like pre-inspection for GMP certification. Uh, we've also through Deloitte and our experience at Deloitte, it uh, brings all the financial aspects of it. So audits for mergers and acquisition, uh, we've done lots of those as well. So thank you again for inviting me. I really appreciate the time. And I'd love to connect with a few of you guys, Javid, uh, especially. Oh, thank you. You replied to my message. Uh, so yeah, uh, looking forward to see where this brings us. And uh, hopefully next time my colleague will be on the on the call as well, Shannon Clute. So thank you all. Thank you, Nico. Uh, well, I saw Adrian jumped on from Blue and Yellow Farm. Um, looks like you're in your car. You might want to turn off your video um, just to make sure you have good service when uh, introducing yourself as a farm member. Go ahead, uh, Adrian. Yep. Hey, thanks, guys. Uh, sorry for late. But yeah, I, um, my name's Adrian. Um, I'm the owner operator of Blue and Yellow Farm. We lost you a little bit there, Adrian. You're owner operator of Blue and Yellow Farm. We have here, pretty small. There you go. I got you yep. a little bit. It seems like your service is jumping in and out a little bit. Yeah, sorry. But yeah, anyway, Blue and Yellow Farm, tier two, sun grown, uh, simple operation. And uh, I'm, all, I, so I'm also the chair um, of the sales committee. Thanks. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Adrian. I want to jump you. over to uh, Steve from VIS Packaging. Aaron, appreciate you, and I always appreciate showing up to these great meetings with uh, such such good people. Uh, as Aaron said, I'm Steve with Vist Oregon. Uh, we have uh, engaged with several of your members so far, and having a having a fun time doing so, and and really showing you guys how to um, or or or, or kind of educating on how we can preserve the value of your cannabis through zero oxygen packaging. Uh, and also, uh, you know, the service that's going to be coming back here, we're, we're finalizing the, um, the SOPs on is the microbial remediation side of things as well. Um, that's going to be huge. Um, our technology, I will tell you this, um, it's the only one that can pull this off without altering the cannabinoids or the terpenes. Uh, so that's a big deal. So would love to chat with you all about that. I know I've sent a few newsletters out to a few of you this morning, kind of introducing myself ahead of this meeting. Uh, and uh, I'll put my contact information over in the chat screen as well. But always appreciate having uh, ha having me on here, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Thanks for, being, thanks for being so consistent, Steve. That's a huge, I mean, for anybody who wants to network and, and really become known, liked, and trusted, you got to show up, right? Well, you know, I, I will be straight up with you guys. Um, this group, I learn so much from every time I get on here. Um, when you get when you get a group of like-minded individuals that are trying to push for a common goal, amazing conversations happen, uh, and, and a lot of education and momentum moving forward. So, 
quite honestly, guys, I get so much out of coming to these. So I appreciate the invites, Justin. Yeah. Thank you, Steve. So I'm going to go next to someone I don't know. His name's Dan, Dan Hanshaw. Could you introduce yourself a little bit, please? Yeah, Aaron. Hi, my name is Dan Hanshaw. I am uh, the VP of Business Development for Pre Laboratories. Um, I just uh, Justin invited me. We just got off an OCA meeting. We had some issues, and I was talking. I've worked with some of the farms down there, like Christine. I know Amy Bodie. I think is also on this this call. Um, we are just a, a lot of a little echo what Steve said. We always uh, when I attend these meetings, and thank you for inviting me as well is as a lab, so with pre-laboratories, we think we know what is going on out there in the, in the farms and what we can, we put our spin on it, but being in these forums and listening to actually what's going on and the, the pains and, 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 um, and that, that some of the producers are, are uh, um, experiencing, uh, sometimes it feels like it, it could be a conflict of interest, but we certainly want to have our finger on the pulse of the, the cannabis community and really lobby for what's best for it, because without, any of you guys, there's no us. So, um, so we're pre laboratories. We're located in Corvallis. We have a location in um, in uh, Clackamas in Portland as well. So we so we serve the whole state for um, uh, cannabis compliance as well as as anything else. Thank you. I definitely know uh, pre laboratories. I've gotten some stuff tested through you guys, and uh, appreciate your uh, you know professionalism and service. So thank you. Thank you, Aaron. Uh, Farmer Tom, do you want to give a quick introduction to yourself? And nice to see you here again. Yeah, good to see you guys. Thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate you guys. Love the direction you're going. Uh, my name is Farmer Tom Lowerman. Um, I've been in the cannabis space my 50th year anniversary this year, so I'm I'm pretty stoked uh, with that. Um, I'm I'm a brand. I'm a farmer. I'm a consultant. And now I'm a media production. I do a, a series where I document the heroes of the green and it's all my heroes in the cannabis industry, industry who've done such great work have, but haven't got the, the proper spotlight attention. Thanks so much for having me on the show. My pleasure. Um, so next is um, Autumn Bird. Um, would you take a moment to introduce yourself and Hi, um, I'm with Savage Skunk Farms. Um, I'm Cody's wife. Um, I was just sitting in today. Um, I just kind of help when I can. We're a small farm, a tier two. Um, we've been operating for the last five years, but we've been growing for the last 10 to 15. And yeah. <laughs> awesome. We're happy well, to be here. Savage Skunk Farms, if I'm not mistaken, was voted on as a new farm member just a couple days ago. Yeah, so, yeah, he's in here in the meeting right now. Awesome. Well, welcome to the group. Super stoked to get to know you guys better. Thank you. I appreciate that. So the last one I see on my video is just a phone number, 831-801-7388. You want to take this moment to introduce yourself? Good morning. It's Andrea Rosso. I was invited by Aaron, and this is my second um, second meeting I got to attend. I was having difficulties with the video, so I, I signed in. Um, I am uh, just an independent consultant that has um, about four years of uh, wholesale experience for one of the larger um, Southern Oregon district companies. Um, I've been working independently with some farms and made some great connections um, with um, some of you individually and just some of the referrals that you guys have provided me. I really like to just say thank you for um, connecting me with some people. It's connected me with some new small farms to represent. And if there's anything I can do or anything that I can offer, um, I'm here just to network and see if there's um, anything I can do to add value. Sweet. Thank you so much, Andrea. Um, for all your farm members or new to potential ones, Andrea does a lot of sales. Um, and she really focuses in the Southern Oregon area from Eugene to the coast to Eastern Oregon. Um, and, um, you know, definitely does great work. So um, why don't you share your contact information in the chat, Andrea, if, if it's possible. If not, I'll share it in there for you eventually. So I think that goes through a lot of the list that I've seen for introductions. Um, I wanted to pass the. the I, don't, I don't know if Marley got to to officially introduce himself. Okay. Sorry about that, Marley. 
Yep, he's an applicant at work. Hey guys, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, I'm a, a second generation sun-grown farmer. Uh, been doing medical since the inception, but uh, we got a rec farm out in Eagle Point now, tier two, uh, all sun-grown native soil and focus on uh, high-grade flower pre-rolls. And uh, we're concentrating more on uh, live rosin extracts right now, which has been good for us. And uh, yeah, looking forward to talking with you guys and maybe meeting in person. Yeah, thanks. Absolutely. So I wanted to, uh, that kind of goes through the um, introductions. If anybody hasn't gotten a chance to introduce themselves, just go ahead and start speaking up. Uh, if I don't hear anything go within the next 15 seconds, I'm gonna pass the spotlight over to our president. Christine Miller. She has some legislative and uh, also, if you wouldn't mind, kind of steering the market update conversation. Um, go for it, Christine. Hi, everyone. Um, I don't have a lot to share on the legislative stuff. I was just in a meeting with Rhea was there and Dan. And one of the big things I think are going to mostly affect us is the heavy metal testing that's coming through next month. And it was um, surprising, and Rita was there, it was surprising to hear that um, a lot of the organic farms are failing the heavy metals testing. And a lot of us are organic farms. And that had to do with mostly from what I can gather, worm castings and kelp. And so, um, and it's a very, very low action levels. Their um, OCA is working on possibly pausing it, the, the rules going into place. But um, it's, uh, I suggest that we do R&D testing. I've talked to Dan this morning and I've also talked to Devin from Greenleaf Labs. And Dan says it's $100 for R&D and he is gonna work on a group discount for our co-op members so that we don't have to quite pay that much. And um, Greenleaf Labs is $150 and I'm trying to get a discount on that. But I know we all have our different labs that we like to work with, but those two have been solid and those are the prices that they have right now. Also water testing, there's a Grants Pass Water Lab will test for heavy metals because if you're on city water, they already have to test it for heavy metals. But if you're on a well water, you might want to test that too, to make sure that you don't fail. Um, Tyler, you go first and then Andrew after that. Um, I'm just going to skip to Andrew since I don't hear Tyler and then you can go next time. Tyler's on mute. My bad. I was on mute. Okay. Um, uh, did, did they reference where they had got that information? Because I remember hearing the same thing about the micro, uh, toxin testing that they did a core sample of products that was on dispensary shelves and that 90% failed. And I haven't heard of anybody failing that once it actually went through. I listened to a lady who, who seemed very knowledgeable in it and she was seemed pretty awesome and her farm personally failed. Okay, that's definitely concerning. She's organic, like 100%, so. Yeah, this, I'm thanks. just gonna add that lady was uh, uh, Mia from Capricorn yeah. Farms, Capricorn Genetics, Abundant Clones, they're, <laughs> pretty well known just I don't think she wanted anybody to know. no she, they introduced her from Capron okay. so people... like... okay. <laughs> yeah cool. no, no nobody wants to uh, have it out there that they that they failed any testing um, but you know the reality is is that this is something that everybody should be concerned out about it, it, even if you're using uh, native soil if you haven't tested you don't know um, if you're using amendments you haven't and you haven't tested those amendments you don't know um, what I wanted to raise and I will just quickly put this in the chat um, this this hasn't been on my radar so far and I apologize for that but um, the, so the rule says that uh, the it's uh, section one, a processor or processing site must test every process lot of finished cannabinoid concentrator extract for use by a consumer patient prior to selling or transferring the cannabinoid concentrator extract for the following 
da, 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 da. D, heavy metals in accordance with the section if the cannabinoid concentrate or extract is or was manufactured on or after March 1st, 2023. So there are dates in these rules. Now, the, the Oregon uh, Cannabis Association is going to, uh, uh, you know, uh, engage in some efforts to 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 put a pause on this rule, but um, no one should hold their breath, um, hoping that those efforts will be successful. I hope they will, and I'm going to be um, uh, uh, participating them as I think it's appropriate. Um, but you should all know that, um, yeah, there are dates in in this uh, in this regulation, and the the critical date is March first. So if extract is created prior to that time, it appears that heavy metal testing will not be required. Now, I'm not going to I'm not a proponent of people selling uh, products that are contaminated with heavy metals, but everyone should know that, you know, that that's the date um, that that's what I wanted to say. It's it's sort of a critical time right now with respect to um, determining what's in your product and. Um, if if there are some objectionable things in your product, it would behoove you to know that now rather than after March 1st, when you are not going to be able to uh, sell that product in the same way as you you might uh, uh, have otherwise. I, I'm not like I said, this just uh, uh, landed on my radar this morning as I was attending that meeting. I, I don't yet know um, what a licensee is able to do as far as uh, re remediation of a failed uh, uh, test batch or, or product, but um, yeah, March 1st is the critical date, and I wanted everybody to be aware of that and to have it's for everybody to have what I just posted in the chat, which is the critical rule to read. Also, the, the rules around uh, that, particularly uh, uh, section OAR 333-007-007. Uh, 0415 and 0420. And um, if anybody wants to follow up with me after and ask questions, uh, I'm, I'm happy to talk. And I wanted to add really quick before we go on to Marley is that um, the lady that did speak on it, she said that they are even her older stuff because they're like turning into like an extract for fresh frozen and stuff. They are making her test her older product too. And that she also had tested some of her leaves in her current grow right now. And they tested over the action limit. And she has like, she can't quite find where her contamination is coming from. So it's just going to be, um, we just have to be careful. And also something that Amy said that she was going to be getting is like where nobody wants to make anybody sick. We're all like plant medicine. We're all like legacy farmers, most of us, I mean, we care about our community basically. And so nobody wants to poison anybody or make anybody sick, but we don't really know where the action level, like where they came up with it and why those are there. So before we go arguing completely against it, we need to figure out why they came up with it. And if there's actually science behind it, and if it was just something that they pulled out of their booties, then we'll fight it harder. I feel like. So, um, Marley. Just a small note, I talked to a couple of farms in California that had failed for using like ocean inputs, like BioLive, Sim simple stuff as that, which was strange to me, but we had our uh, extracts tested through a third party lab for everything and we passed. Um, so that was good, just as a, as a note. Thank but I've you, heard Mark. stories where people can't, like you're saying, like they can't track it. They don't know where it's coming from, which is scary. Yeah, she said that she tested her soil. She thought it was that. They have perfectly clean tested soil and they're still having heavy metals come up. And they know that kelp and worm castings like have been kind of, but she's being very careful and still having an issue. So that's why I figured if everybody here, especially if Dan will give us a discount, maybe we can get a gram sample or whatever. Um, Greenleaf needs a gram. I'm not sure what pre needs for testing to like one central location, let's say Millerville's re uh, wholesale. And then we could just do testing all at once. And then whoever fails and whoever passes, then we can kind of like get together and see like, this is what I was doing and kind of narrow it down so we can get a safe list for people moving forward with the co-op because this is, we're already struggling. We're already broke and not being able to sell a crop that we've already put a hundred percent of the money. For. Could if you're be making really... tracks at all too, 
just testing the flour is not going to help you. You got to test the extracts. Well, we got to start with the flour and then go from there, I think, because that'll give us a good, the same thing when we first started pesticides, like coming in in 2016, I researched heavily on the nutrients I was going to use because I was worried about pesticides and it was super scary until we got our first R&D back. So I think this is just going to be something we're going to have to work through together and we can we'll share that information. Part of being the co-op is going to be able to share test results and farming practices for people who do have clean tests and just helping each other. So um, Green Bandit, Sarah. Yeah, uh, well, Marley answered one of my questions, which was, have we heard of anybody passing with heavy metals? Because it sounded like quite a few failures. Um, I was wondering if Christine or Rhea or anybody else has heard of more success stories, right? And, um, and <clears throat> yeah, I do find it very strange that we could be using products that are approved, you know, for organic use for food production, and yet you could fail by using that product. I just think that's a pretty strong leg to stand on if we have to be arguing with um, the ODA or, who, uh, you know, the, the regulators who are setting this rule um That's well I think brian i think i Go think ahead. the the differentiation is the fact that food grade is not based on extracts so it's like pesticides um you can safely use pesticides that are on the approved list and be under the um, designated level on your flower and you can send that to extract and it will be above the designated level yeah yeah i'm so yeah. It sounds like the issue's coming from extract specifically. And is, is this testing only for extract or is it for flour as well? It, it, it is for flour. And I wanna just say that I did hear Christine say that a woman had failed with just leaf material, if I'm not mistaken, over the action limit. That sounds like a spray or a foliar then to me. She did her own R&D from what I, she seemed super knowledgeable on the subject and she did her own R&D just to try to figure out herself pre-harvest kind of thing. And I supposedly, what she said is that the, the leaves hold a lot more heavy metals. So it might not be an issue in her flower. So these are going to be things that are going to be coming. Maybe Dan, since you're the lab guy here, what are, how many R&Ds have you done? How, what percentage of fail have you seen? If you have any of that information? Yeah, I was. I, I, we have done some R and Ds, um, uh, and we haven't seen any uh, any failures as of now. But now that now that's two different areas. We're doing those mainly in the north, and in possibly an indoor market, and it might be a little different. Um, we're offering the R and Ds for sure uh, to 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 get ahead of this and kind of see. But the time frame seems really short, right? We've got three weeks to implement this, or four weeks to implement, and uh, we're ready to go. But my concern is. Um, uh, are the farms ready to go? You know, I mean, I don't want to start failing. Every, I don't want to see failures, but um, yeah, we haven't seen a ton yet, but not a lot of people have taken us up on the R&D either. We're trying to push it and say, hey, now's the time to do it. We even actually had a special on it last month. So I can get some statistics, some actual numbers, but we haven't seen, I don't think we've seen one heavy metal failure yet based on right. who's, who's tested. Thank you. That would yeah. be amazing if you can get us some data and then also, I would like to get on a call with you after this and schedule a testing time for you to come out to maybe a wholesale facility and just grab a sample of everybody's all at once. And so this R and D could they, they have to, be, um, can you like basically segregate them from everything else so that they don't cause. Oh, you mean a metric? Yes. Yes. That's what we want to do if we can. And we'll check with the OLCC. We don't want to have a, an R&D um, failure on uh, attached to one of your, you know, one of your batches. So we yeah. want to find a way to make sure that we can do that where we can, they can set, set aside, you know, be like you said, Christine, separate and apart. You have knowledge and not any kind of uh, repercussions. Awesome. Tyler. Oh, that was, uh, I already spoke. Sorry. Uh, Sarah and oh. Brian. Yeah, I would just say that, uh, well, uh, back to Marley, congrats for passing on that lab. I'd like to talk to you more about what you guys are doing. I mean, we're organic over here and I'm not using any ocean inputs. So at least we've got that going for us here, but I would very much like to talk to you and kind of gather some information, right? Um, and to that note, while we're on the big board here, I wanna let everybody know that what we've talked about here at the farm is, 
um, in order to get members together, we're going to make our farm available on the second Sunday of every month for, for farm members to come out here and just talk shop and, you know, meet in person. Um, and then we could do things like compare notes surrounding this topic. And it sounds like this year, it's going to be pretty important that we are very clear on what we put into our fields and know ahead of time, all of those things. So I'm, I'm also going to ask Marley, if that's something you'd be down with coming out here, maybe talking with other members about, you know, what's working. Which, uh, Brian, which uh, days did you say that was going to be Sundays? Which Sundays? Second Sunday. I just thought that was an easy one for people to remember. It also seems like maybe easy middle of the month time for people to be able to make it. And really just casual, right? It's just, we already do this here on Sundays. People are generally just visiting on that day, if any day here to the farm. Um, so yeah, second Sunday. And then it's just like, I'll have food cooking and things like that. We can, you know, have a soda, have a beer, whatever, but it's just going to be a good time, I think. And we could do this at other people's farms too, but this is just me jumping out there and saying, I really do want to get farms together. And I want to make sure that we, uh, we all move forward in a, a steady uh, and sure-footed direction. Uh, that's all. Thank you so much, Brian. That sounds awesome. And um, I want to go back to what Aaron's saying in the chat is he's asking, it, it's only material that's harvested after March 2022. Rhea read the rule and that's what it sounded like. But then the lady that I was listening to at that um, OCA legislative committee, she said that their concentrates that they're making are getting tested for it and they are held accountable for the um, heavy metals. And I think that even if we don't, we're not held accountable for our 2022 harvest yet, these are going to be things that we don't, we're all planting in a couple of months. We have to start our moms. We, there's all these things that are becoming, we really need to be proactive for the long run. And also we talked about my call, like the um, microbial activity testing too. So maybe we can, I don't, Dan, can you do those at the same time, the microbe and the heavy metals? And is it the same cost? And do you still only need two grams? Yeah, um, as far as, yeah, uh, we can do those at the same time. And they're, yeah, they're, they are the same costs. Um, but again, we'll, we'll, we'll discuss that. Uh, uh, what was I just, you were just talking about, uh, oh, as far as, as far as from a lab standpoint, how we're interpreting the rules, just so you know, flour um, uh, harvested, obviously harvested after March 1st, sure. But as soon as a concentrate is produced, that's the, becomes the harvest date, right? So if it's March 2nd, that becomes that harvest date. So that falls within that that scope that we're going to be running mark uh, the heavy metals on the concentrates after that flower. We may not even see any flower um, until three weeks into March, right? Because of harvest or however things line up. So we'll be not testing for it if it's be pre March one, pre March one. But concentrates obviously have a different production date and the harvest date, so that will fall into that. That's how we see it interpreted. Thank you 